Every offseason, we are seeing big names get traded. This one could be no different. Could Justin Jefferson be on the move? All right, welcome in. I'm excited to get into this one. Justin Jefferson, could he potentially be on the move? This coming by way of Charlie Walters, reposted by Dove Kleiman. There is steam that the Vikings could make Justin Jefferson available via trade. This is all coming up because Justin Jefferson is heading into the final year of his contract, his fifth year option worth about $19 million. And the Minnesota Vikings might be looking to wheel and deal him in order to jumpstart a rebuild that they're looking for up in Minnesota. Obviously, Kirk Cousins not under contract, coming off a torn Achilles. They're losing to Neil Hunter, Davin, uh, Marcus Davenport, a few players across that team, they might be looking to recoup some draft capital for a receiver that is at the top of his game. Justin Jefferson, over the course of the last few years, has broken a thousand yards each of the last four seasons with 1,800 coming just two years ago. Now he did miss a bunch of games last year, seven games, it still got a thousand yards, but just crazy. Absolutely wild. The, the, the pace of production that Justin Jefferson has had is nothing short of incredible. And I will hang my hat on this. I had C.D. Lamb and then Justin Jefferson as my two receivers in that class. And I am feeling pretty good about both those guys uh, as major, major players in the NFL. This is something that the Minnesota Vikings are not unaccustomed to. Obviously, they've made big time wide receiver trades in the past. First with Randy Moss, they got Napoleon Harris and a first round pick, number seven overall, and a seventh round pick for Randy Moss. And then just a few years ago with Stefan Diggs, they got a first round pick number 22, which they then flipped to use on Justin Jefferson. They also got a fifth round pick, a sixth round pick and a next year's fourth round pick. I believe they did throw back a sixth round pick or a fifth round pick or something like that towards the bills as well, but not crazy to think that the Minnesota Vikings might be looking to move an elite wide receiver in his prime when there's precedent to do so all along. Now, as far as the contracts go, there's some big contracts that they're going to be expecting for the wide receiver group here. And this is because of just a litany of different things. Obviously, the wide receiver contracts looking pretty big, pretty, pretty big. So we're expecting what? Uh, reset the market, right? Five years, $150 million. That would put him $30 million guaranteed, uh, $30 million per year with an even higher guarantee. You're talking Tyree Kill had the, I guess the second highest. Cooper Cup has the highest guaranteed money in terms of $75 million fully guaranteed. I would imagine with Justin Jefferson hitting the market, you're thinking probably closer to $100 million at this particular point in time. Not to mention he's 25 years old. Look at this list. T. Higgins, literally the only one near that age, and he's on the franchise tag. So Justin Jefferson could absolutely command top dollar, and $30 million a year is not unreasonable. This is what Justin Jefferson had to say in regards to his contract. What about the latest on your contract? Because my goodness, Justin, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, break the bank. Let's, <laughs> let's go. Whatever they're offering you, it's got to be more. I, and I love my guys with the Vikings, but what's the latest here with your contract? Hey, I'm right there with you, man. I, I want to, I want to break the bank and I want to be a part, you know, of an organization, you know, that wants me and, and to, to really give me what I, I deserve. So, you know, um, I feel like, you know, eventually, uh, um, you know, the Vikings will, you know, do what they need to do to have me in the building. But, you know, it, I don't really know at this very moment. You know, uh, only time will tell. Um, I feel like I have the right people in my, in my circle to, to, you know, negotiate and to, you know, do what's right. And um, I feel like this whole process of how we handle things and um, how we, you know, went accordingly with the, the season and the contract stuff, I feel like we did a great job with it. What if you don't get it from Minnesota? Would you consider, you know, all different options or how would you play that out? Um, I'm not really too sure at this very moment. You know, uh, I mean, I, I definitely am grateful for what Minnesota has done for me. Uh, you know, I definitely wouldn't be in this situation uh, if they didn't pick me, you know, just to be the fifth receiver taken. Uh, I'm still pissed off about that. <laughs> me and you both. Oh. Me and you both. But uh, I mean, just uh, just with everything that has happened and everything that I have gave for the organization, uh, of course, I would you know want to stay, and uh, that's why I've, I've been calling home ever since I got into the league. So, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. But uh, I just want to play football. So he just wants to play football. I think clearly saying he wants to break the bank makes it seem like he's at least looking for that Tyree kill thirty million dollars, which begs the question: What teams could potentially? be looking for him and would it be a good idea well as far as his, as his injury history goes 
really nothing to speak of. He missed the seven games this past year, but other than that, he has played in every game since being drafted by the Minnesota Vikings. So injury is not one of those things that you have to be overly concerned about. In terms of salary cap space, you're going to need a team with a lot of salary cap space, teams you could look at here. New England Patriots got a lot. The Texans, the Cardinals, the Chiefs looking for a wide receiver don't have as much to work with. Hacking up a lung over here. Uh, and of course, our New York Jets down here at the bottom. Now, there could be some teams maybe a little bit lower below us that might be looking for a wide receiver, but we're going to say the Jets are kind of the floor here. Now, obviously, the Patriots have a ton of cap space. They don't have a quarterback right now, but there's nothing saying they can't go after one with all the cap space they have and the top draft pick at number three overall. The Texans, do they want to add an elite wide receiver and just go all in while they have a rookie quarterback on their rookie deal? You have the Cardinals who, Cardinals who are projected to take Marvin Harrison Jr. at the number four overall pick. I think that's entirely possible if they're looking to pair him with Kyler Murray. The Chiefs looking for a wide receiver, probably going to be out of their price range based on the contracts that they have coming down the pipeline there. And then the Jets, are we willing to forego future cap space to sign a wide receiver like this? We've seen the numbers. If you restructure some people and cut a few players, the Jets could have a ton of money. And you look, his cap, hit's not going to be $30 million his first year. It's going to be a lower number. And then it escalates as years go on. Could the Jets wind up making uh, noise here? But overall, you guys saw the, the thumbnail for this video. This is talking primarily about the AFC East. So we got four teams in here. Here's where the cap space currently stands. So I feel like you could pretty much cross off the Buffalo Bills and the Miami Dolphins with the Jets and the Patriots both being interesting situations in terms of a trade. Things we can consider. Things we can consider. Very, very interesting. As far as the New York Jets, well, look. Justin Jefferson already has Jets in his Instagram profile. Justin Jets Jefferson, come on. He wants to be opposite Garrett Wilson, getting thrown the rock by Aaron Rodgers, former division rival. We've already brought in one Viking last year. Maybe, uh, you know, there's a little bit of hope and wishing that uh, the offense that was in Minnesota was around Aaron in Green Bay. You got Les Sauce Gardner chiming in, replying to the Dove Kleinman tweet about Jefferson being available, posting the little baby song all in. Les Sauce Gardner, always targeting the top wide receivers. There's also precedent from the New York Jets in this current regime. Just this year, we have tried on multiple occasions to try and trade for Mike Evans, Devontae Adams, and T. Higgins. And then if you want to take that a step further, a few years ago with this same regime, we tried to trade for Calvin Ridley and Tyree Kill. So the Jets are not afraid to go out and spend some money and go out and trade some draft picks to get a top-end wide receiver here. So again, precedent is here for the New York Jets. Now, as far as draft picks are concerned, this is where things start to get interesting because Minnesota is currently sitting at the number 11 pick, the Jets sitting one pick ahead of them at number 10. Here are the point values associated with each of those draft picks per uh, the NFL trade value chart or draft pick value chart. Now, let's say the Jets give up number 10 for Minnesota and they want to go up for a quarterback. Well, guess what? If you add the number 10 pick to the number 11 pick, that gets you to 2,500 points. That puts you in the premium threshold for that number three overall pick. So if there's a situation where the Minnesota Vikings are saying, hey, we want to go up and trade this wide receiver to go get our franchise quarterback because this is how we can do it. This is an asset that we maybe can't afford. It doesn't make sense to pay him $30 million a year on a team that is rebuilding. Let's go out and go get our wide receiver. So maybe a situation where the Jets give up number 10 and a future 2025 first round pick. Maybe that's what you're kind of considering here with Justin Jefferson or if you're the New England Patriots, I mean, that 2,200 pick, if you're saying 10 and, and 11 to possibly come up to three, and it's going to cost you two first-round picks anyway to get Justin Jefferson, maybe New England is considering the idea of trading the number three pick straight up for Justin Jefferson. Maybe it's some sort of, of funky trade back. Maybe it's like, New England falls from three to 11 and gets a first next year from, uh, you know, Minnesota in conjunction with like the trade of Justin Jefferson. I, I don't know how those points would work out, but it's interesting because maybe they make the leapfrog up to number 11. And who knows, maybe JJ McCarthy is sitting there for them at number 11 overall for the New England Patriots. Maybe they don't want to fork over all the crazy stuff when they're going through a rebuild. 
Now, it's interesting because are they going through the same rebuild that the Minnesota Vikings are going? Because I think there's probably some argument for that is like, well, why would Minnesota trade him if New England's going through like a similar thing? Having the number three overall pick changes everything. And if, if New England does not feel that the number three overall pick is gonna be used towards a quarterback, maybe they're thinking Marvin Harrison Jr. I would trade the number three overall pick hands down for Justin Jefferson, you know, no questions asked. If there had to be other things involved, then, you know, maybe it gets a little bit more convoluted from there. But I could totally see a situation where the New England Patriots or the New York Jets are looking to possibly make a trade for Justin Jefferson. As far as the other teams in this, in this uh, you know, conversation here, the number one pick, man, I wish Carolina, I bet Carolina wishes they had that pick right now. Whether it's to take Caleb Williams or to just trade straight up for Justin Jefferson would be huge. Washington maybe could make a pick, but I think with the new regime and everything going in there, it feels like it's probably a Washington pick. New England, a little different because it's not necessarily a new regime. It's a takeover of a current regime kind of. Uh, Cardinals, could they change number four? It's possible if Jaden Daniels falls to number four, maybe there's a situation where the Cardinals call up the Minnesota Vikings and say, hey, you want to come up here? This is what it's going to take. It could happen. They're looking at Marvin Harrison Jr. anyway. I don't know if I, I necessarily see that. I think they might just reset the clock with the younger, cheaper wide receiver. The, the Chargers don't have any cap space. The Giants don't really have a quarterback to speak of right now. I don't know if Daniel Jones is necessarily making anyone feel warm and fuzzy. Tennessee... Could they do it? I, I I don't see that as a move they would make. But again, wide young wide receiver, or uh, well, young wide receiver, young quarterback over there in Will Levis. Maybe they make a, a, a you know a, a trade similar to the Buffalo Bills did, or similar to the Miami Dolphins, where they trade for a Stephen Diggs, they trade for a Tyreek Hill, and you get your young signal caller, the number one wide receiver. I think that's entirely possible. Atlanta probably not uh, going to make a whole lot of sense there. Chicago probably not as well, just because of all the assets they currently have and not, not to mention their division rivals it's not going to happen within the division and then you get to our jets so that like of the teams in this top section here new england gets you two number three which is what you want and the jets pick plus your own pick in conjunction with maybe future picks that the jets could give would get you up to number three as well in terms of trade value charts so i think when i look at these teams the jets and the 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 Patriots seem to be in the best position in terms of draft capital to go get a player like this. I guess the conversation revolves around, should a team go up and give up these picks? Should the New York Jets do this? Should the uh, the, the the New England Patriots do this? For the Jets, I, I don't know how you say no. <laughs> like right now, I understand you got to fix the offensive line and that's a big problem. But if you're the New York Jets and you're thinking AVT because of his fifth year option, which is going to be that of an elite offensive tackle, is going to cost you so much after next year, you might be saying, well, he's going to move to offensive tackle anyway. And if you think you can sign one offensive tackle in free agency, well, that opens up number 10 to be used on a weapon, a weapon that Aaron Rodgers was able to see in Green Bay on a consistent basis over the course of the last three years. And then on top of that, Aaron Rodgers never had a first round wide receiver added to his roster in Green Bay. So maybe the Jets are saying, hey, look, we're going to use our number one pick and get you the best possible wide receiver you could possibly get. And maybe it's not by way of young wide receiver, but by way of one that's already developed. Could you imagine Garrett Wilson and Jeff, Justin Jefferson with Brees Hall coming out of the backfield? This team all of a sudden is ready, locked, and loaded. I don't care about the salary cap implications. This is like so far beyond what I need to worry about right now. Uh, I want to win some games and try to go all in for a Super Bowl. If this is remotely a possibility, I think the New York Jets would have to be in on this type of move. And even if you had to figure out the whole financial side of things, well, oh, you can't give up the draft picks. Guess what? Your draft picks could just as easily be Makai Becton and Zach Wilson. Would you want either one of those players in, in place of Justin Jefferson? Probably not. Money-wise, oh, you can't give up $30 million. Lakin Tomlinson, Carl Lawson, and friggin' Alan Lazard. Would you give up all three of those and their salaries to have Justin Jefferson? You probably would. So like there, there's ways to do it and you can make it work as far as contractually with like the timing of our young players. That's the one thing you'd want to consider, right? You could pay Justin Jefferson the money you need because there's a certain, you have to make a decision. Obviously 2027 is when the big money would kick in for all our first round picks from the 2022 draft, right? Do I have my year right? Yeah. 2022 draft. Justin, uh, the only player that would really impact it would be 
Brees Hall, who's going to get a contract one year earlier, but you think maybe he signs a contract after next year, they extend it, they make it a little bit cheaper. Either way, why not? Let's just get all the weapons right now. I don't care. We're already pot committed on the Aaron Rodgers stuff. Let's just all the chips in the middle. Screw it. I don't care. I don't need a first round pick next year if you're giving me Justin Jefferson for this year and next year with Aaron Rodgers. Boys and girls, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Is this even remotely possible? Do you think he gets traded at all? Is there a better team than the New York Jets or potentially the New England Patriots that could land Justin Jefferson? What do you think it ultimately goes for? Let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, go Jets. If you guys are like me, you're probably sick of all the spam emails and annoying robocalls that you get to your phone. My life has basically become a walking, talking pop-up ad, and it is incredibly frustrating. These are all coming from data brokers, guys that buy your data, first name, last name, email address, home address, health records, relatives' names. All this information is being sold constantly to the highest bidder, and it's incredibly frustrating. That's why the sponsor of our video, Aura, is so incredible. Aura shows me exactly which data brokers are buying and selling my data and automatically opts me out of those lists. So my inbox is getting completely cleared out. I'm able to like have my security the way it should be because you may have some of the services that will protect you, a VPN, antivirus, password managing services. You might have identity theft insurance. Literally all these things come packaged in one app with Aura. Very cool. You'll probably save yourself a crazy ton of money just by shaving off all the different services that you wind up having. Not to mention, like I said, you get that 14-day free trial. Link in the description down below. 100% think you guys should try it because if you have some of these services, it's like locking your front door but still leaving the back door wide open. So I can't recommend it enough. It has made my life dramatically easier and less of a pop-up ad as you... Uh, can imagine is is incredibly frustrating to have all this data going all over the place. So not only am I seeing less of the spam, but I know my information is being locked down and protected and monitored in a way that I can feel secure about it. So guys, I'm going to leave the description down below with the promo code and with the link to Aura. I highly suggest you at least give the 14-day free trial a run. Thank you so much for sponsoring the channel. J -E -T -S, Jets, Jets!